Hello. Hello. In this week's video, we're going to show you how to use your sat nav or update your sat nav, the one that causes you all the problems and frustrations that comes as standard with your van, that gets on your nerves, that doesn't work. We're going to show you how it works. <laughs> So this week's video, we're going to show you how the exempt head unit works. Most vans are fitted with it as standard, aren't they? If you say so. Well, most of the ones we've been looking at are. And we see loads of stuff on the forums, people getting upset, frustrated with it, doesn't work properly, slow, and we're going to show you basically how to get the most out of it. How to get the most out of the nav, how to get the most out of the DAB radio, and generally how it works and some shortcuts and stuff too. Caroline isn't going to come with me for this bit because it's quite a technical video. So um, <laughs> feel free if you want, please, we won't be offended. Feel free to skip forward. In the description below, so if you just click on the little bar, you'll see the description for the video. We're going to put some time stamps in there so you can skip forward in the video to certain sections if you just don't want to hear me waffling about the, uh, the, the radio and how it works. Yeah, this is, this is all of me in the video and it's just so you know I'm still here. Um, she will be here at the end. Yeah. Yeah, but for the summary. A, a, as in the, you know, the, the boring in, the, in between bit. Yeah. That's all Ian. <laughs> Thanks. That's just a great description of you there. <laughs> so kind. So without further ado, we'll start. So the nav fitted to the van in our, our van is an uh, Exent. It's spelled Exent, as E-N-T. It's a German manufacturer. Comes as standard in most auto trails and quite a lot of vans use them. It's the nav unit in ours, it's the XF220, which we'll talk about, but it's in the discontinued model. So the later models have different specs, XF270, I think. Um, stop laughing at me. Uh, but they've changed, they've changed quite a bit. So ours is a little bit out of date, it's obsolete, but it's still relevant in terms of this video. So we'll show you. So why do you need a specific motorhome nav unit? What's the benefit? I'm hoping this is a rhetorical question <laughs> and I'm not supposed to know the answer. Um, do you not remember when we were... Oh, I do remember. I do remember because it puts in the van... In, it's um, specific for vans. Excellent. Well yes. done. Yeah, good memory. So when we first got the van and we were driving around, we were using the nav and we weren't particularly enamoured with it. I'll explain why. Um, but we were also using phones, using Google Maps and, and, and Apple Maps, weren't we? Well, that's well. just because Ian doesn't ever trust one map. No, no, it's not. <laughs> that's not the case. But because this this specific motorhome is, is motorhome specific, as Caroline said, we discovered it's really, really got some great features. So we were using, as I say, Google and Apple, and Caroline was directing us, we're going to Cornwall, weren't we, down in Devon? Yes. And it was taking us down this really narrow lane, and, and the van nav was taking us a completely different route. And we realised because it was a width restriction later on, um, so we went down Caroline's route and then we realised that probably wasn't for the best and the van had tried to direct us in a different way. So after that point, after navigating down this really narrow road we shouldn't have been on, um, that was actually got width restriction for vans, we turned around, went back and we used the, the van nav ever since. Yes. So that's the main benefit of having this, if you can stick with it, if you can bear with it. Rather than using Google and Apple, uh, Android Auto or Google Maps, etc., they don't have specifics for vans or, com or motorhomes, etc. You need a specific motorhome or lorry, you know, if you've got a truck, that kind of sat nav for them. You see so many trucks getting stuck because they don't have sat nav. Yeah, because they're using the foot, which I might say was what I was using. I wasn't directing that. We, yeah. we stopped that a long, long time ago, me navigating anywhere that wasn't an actual official map. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people do. A lot of people use Google Maps. There's nothing wrong with that, but just to bear in mind that you might take you to down routes that are not suitable for your camper van or motorhome. Um, the biggest thing for me that's brought that home was I went to have the van for its first, it had a recall on it. I took it into a dealer I'd never been to before. I got there, but I went to go there and the nav said, don't go down the route that Google was saying. When I got to the garage, I asked the lady, you know, is, is there a low bridge around here? She went, oh yeah, yeah, don't go that way. Whatever you do, there's a low bridge, you won't get under it. So again, the, the, the nav unit took us round. So we're now gonna explain uh, how the nav unit and what you need to do first of all before you do anything. This is the most important point with the nav, the first thing you have to do. So the first thing, the most important thing you have to do with the nav is, do you remember what I did when I first got it? 
Update it. Update it, very good. You always do. Yeah. It's not quite as straightforward as updating it, you know, remotely. You have to literally do a download off the internet using a computer. I've got a computer here. And then you put it onto a memory stick or an SD card and you plug it into the nav unit and then you update it. So the first thing to do is to check the version you, you're running in, the, in your nav, which I'll show you later in the video how to do that. Once you understand that, you can check and get the latest downloaded version from Exen's website. I'm going to open this laptop and I'm going to do this and I'm going to put it on the screen so you can see exactly what I'm doing once I've got to that point. Although, I can't remember the password. <laughs> okay, we're good, we're in. So, I'm going to click on this and I'm going to start recording my screen so you can see exactly what's doing. I'll put this over this once I'm talking through it. It'll only take a few seconds, but I want to show you where to find the information and how to do the update. So, How often do you have to update it then? Whenever they release new software. But how do you know they, when they release They can software? sign up and they'll send you reminders when, when you get them. But um, oh, okay. ours is obsolete now, so we stopped having updates, which is a little bit of a downside, but it still works well. I'll get all my notifications as well. Right, bear with me two seconds. I'm going to start recording my screen. Okay, so I'm going to start recording my screen now, so you can see what I'm doing. So go to Google, type in Exent. Feel free to use other web browsers. Exent is the brand, so exent.com. Click on the website, and it'll take you into their, their product website, their catalog, so you can see. It's actually in German and English, so you can choose your language. It's defaulted to English, because it's determined that we're in the UK, and then obviously it's got the products. Put it in, put it in German and give yourself a challenge. Uh, no, no, definitely not. So the first thing you need to do is click on support. You'll see at the top, you've got support, or hover over support, and then go down to software updates. There's also one for sat-nav updates. You have to do that through a separate website because the sat-nav providers are a slightly different uh, company, but you can, the link for it's on here as well. We're gonna focus on software update on this one. Um, the sat-nav updates are exactly the same process, just follow exactly what it says on the screen for it as well. Click on software updates, and then it brings up um, a list of all the different nav units so you can see the one I talked about a second ago the XF270 the latest one and you can see when the update was out the version so that it says two point, so version 2.5 on the screen um, and you can see the different makes and models are on there so you can see them from there now as I said ours is a slightly older one if yours is slightly older as well the good news is that Exent support that so if you go to halfway down the page you'll see product archive click on that and it will load the uh, previous models so if I scroll down and keep going. Oh, so if you've bought an older van. Yep. And that's the whoever's owned it before you might have never updated it. Correct. You can still update it to the most recent. Yes, exactly. Update. Yeah, you can. You don't have to log into this at all. All you have to do is find the model you're looking at your, your van and you can just download it straight away. So you'll see on the download for ours, the XF220, there is a download install, installation guide and there's a download update. That's the file to do the update. You just download that onto your computer. And then you basically it tells you what to do. You copy it onto either an, a memory stick, an eight gig memory stick, um, which you plug into the USB on the van, uh, on, sorry, on the on the radio, which is in the van, or you can put it onto an SD card as well. Uh, you've got a choice of either or. Just one thing to bear in mind: you mustn't put it onto the SD card that's already in the van. That's got the maps on it. It'll wipe all your maps off. So the, the thing I'd recommend to do is down, download the installation guide first of all. It puts it as a um, as a PDF and then either have that on a separate tablet or print it out or whatever so you've got instructions there so you don't forget them because it's useful to take that out to the van with you when you do your updates so once you've got that then you can just quickly um, you know you can then go into the uh, the update itself and you can download it and it explains exactly what to do on there so really simple couple of clicks from Google you download the file um, and once you've done that you then put it onto a memory stick or an SD card you plug it into the van uh, into the uh, radio and it'll do the update for you automatically and the great thing on the van it'll show you the latest version it's got in it and that's the really it that's it simple all done any questions now the exciting bit I'm gonna head off with Molly and go and show how the radio works the reason why I'm doing it here at home close this down now the reason I'm doing it at home because it shows obviously your home address on the nav as soon as you put it on. So Molly and I are going to head to Delamere Forest, which is not too far from Chester. It's half up between Chester and Northwich. And we're going to film there and you can come back at the end to catch up with Caroline. So we'll see you in Delamere Forest. Okay, so we have arrived at our destination. Molly and I are in Delamere Forest. So we've come here to show you how to use the Exent head unit system in the van. So I'll show you around quickly, and then after we've done this, if Molly's been really good and waited patiently, 
while I show you how the Exent head unit works, then she'll get to run around in the forest and explore, which is what she's here for. We love the forest. We, uh, we come here either on four paws or two wheels. This is great for mountain biking as well. It's not too far from Chester. It's between Chester and Northwich. I'll show you on a map. But yeah, so here we are here. So I can show you how the Exent head unit works and show you the mapping and everything else that goes with it. So I'll turn the van off and I will show you how it works. <laughs> Just to show you, Molly is very excited. She's been waiting patiently and she absolutely loves the forest. It's her favorite place. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Absolutely loves it. She knows the word and uh, she knows we're here. So to sit in and be quiet while I do the filming is going to be quite a test, but we'll see. Won't be mull. So just a quick look outside, we are here in the forest. There's plenty of like laybys and stuff you can park in near the road. So I've just pulled over. Um, there's obviously an official car park as well, but this is great for coming and bringing Molly. You have to pay uh, and it's really good, it's handy. So we're going to explore into the forest in a bit. So one of the really tricky things about filming a head unit or this it gives a reflection off and you can see it's starting to reflect a little bit there so i'm not using a tripod i'm trying to do this by hand just to try to keep the reflection away it's very hard to do but i'm going to show you how it works so just to give you an introduction to it this is the Xent or zent whatever you want to call it ours is the xf220 model um it's a slightly old-fashioned model i don't think it's fitted as standard anymore it has a cd player at the top an ejection button there so you can run cds in there uh, if you have any CDs. The, down here you've got your slot for your memory card and that's for the sat nav unit where we sat, sat, sat satellite navigation card which goes in there that's really important. Buttons on the left hand side you've got your volume control and your controls on there. You've got your cam button which turns your reversing camera on if I press that I don't think it'll do a great deal because the engine's not on that's right and then you've got um, display you can dim the display and then you can touch again to turn it into standby. I'm sorry I have dusted that once already and it's showing dust on the screen oh my goodness don't judge me please um alternate press that one um it lets you go to uh, alternate which is set up for av in so you can have an input input from the back so if you had a dvd player connected to it or something i don't but you can have that as an alternate setting and then bt stands for bluetooth and that lets you connect your goes to your phone your connections and everything else and i'll show you how to do that in a second on the left hand side you've got home button you've got tuner for radio you've got search and then you've also got nav and we'll look at those in a second as well. So that's a general introduction to this head unit. Most of them are the same, similar head units, similar controls, some of them are touch, just touch screen, but they all sort of work in the same way. Okay, I wanna show you how the menus work now on this system. So dead simple, you press the home button, it goes to here, you've got this button then rotates across the different, different functions. You can just twist it, it'll go to the next screen. So you've got navigation, FM tuner, DAB, You've also got camera for the rear camera, disc, and then USB. You can plug a USB in. The USB is actually plugged into the top of the dashboard, let me show you. So the USB is in here. Uh, sorry, that's not it. There we go. The USB plugs into there, and you can connect it in straight into there, which is quite handy if you want to connect anything USB to it. And then go into the next menu, just twist along again. Keep going. And we go to here. And then you've got iPod input. Um, if we've got an iPod, AV in, which is generally anything USB, music's powered, AV in for plugging in like auxiliary um, audiovisual stuff, it'll play, play something if you plugged into it, you could plug on a TV at home, Bluetooth, equalizer, settings, easy connect, that's if you've got a smartphone that connects to it, um, and then you've got, okay, going again, again to the next page, sorry. Then you've got HDMI, there's a HDMI socket in the back of it, and you've got demo mode as well, which shows you how it works. So it's got plenty of functions. It's probably the most frustrating thing for most people on the van is the nav and the dab tuner. I'm gonna show you how to sort of get the most out of them as well. We'll start with the dab tuner because it's quite straightforward. So do that, press the button in the middle, and it goes into it. So this is now on dab. I've got the sound turned off so I don't break any copyright laws so you can't hear anything but you can see this is at the moment is set up for my presets so I've got BBC Radio 1, history etc on there. There are a number of functions and the easiest way to sort of do this to check it out is if you press the settings button it brings up a list of menus so you've got the option to do a full scan the main difference between this and your car nav is, and your, sorry, your car dab, it doesn't automatically scan. You have to do it manually. So if you go to a new location, which many of us do in our motorhomes, you need to press that button and then do a scan. And it'll do a full scan and it'll search for channels. And that's really important because it'll find all the local radio stations. You can see it's actually really quick. Um, sometimes it takes a bit longer depending on the signal it's picked up from. But as the van is stationary, it should be relatively fast. So it's just going through that and searching. I'll speed this bit up. 
Okay, so that's, that's the full scan. It's just taken a couple of minutes to do that. You can see the clock at the top right. And then once that's done, it goes off. So now I've got the ability to search for any stations I want. So again, I can bring up the list, which is really easy to do. You press the button and it'll bring up all the different lists. Now something to bear in mind, it brings up a choices here. It's not like a normal radio. So if you wanted your local stations like Northwest, North Wales and West Cheshire, you press the top one and that'll bring up a list of all those stations. Um, or alternatively, if you want national stations, you can go to that and look at national stations. So it gives you the options then when you start to scan as to what you want to choose. Um, this button here gives you more information and these ones scan through the next station, etc. You can see it going through them at the top there from we can pick up. So it's picking up Talk Sport, it's on the nationals. If I change that to Radio X, Kiss, etc. If I change that just to show you what it does, North Wales, it'll bring up a different set of stations. So now it's gone to Love 80s Liverpool, and then it'll bring up some local stations. Dion Dab, that's the local one in Chester. So you can see that's the difference between picking up local stations and national stations, just using that menu button there at the bottom, that one there. So what a lot of people get frustrated with is when they come back to the Dab, um, oh, if you want to save anything, sorry, you just hold down on the on the button which station you're on. So if I wanted TalkSport, for example, let's get rid of um, Absolute Radio. So TalkSport's on at the moment. If you just hold that down, it'll automatically select it. And that's now changed to talk sport that's how you save your presets what a lot of people get frustrated with with the dab system is that it seems to forget when you turn the engine off it seems to forget that uh, and, and turn the radio off it seems to forget your stations there's a reason for that it needs to be powered you see there's a there's a 12 volt dab plus power on here if that's off it loses its it loses its memory for me um, so I leave that on and when I come back to it, it always remembers my stations but when you switch that to off it will forget the stations so next time you come back to it in a week or two weeks, the stations have all gone. So just bear in mind that needs to be on. And obviously it has the power then to ba basically make sure that it's remembering everything for you there as well. Um, and then you've got some other options on there as well. But that's effectively how the DAB system works. It's really straightforward. It works really well. A lot of people get frustrated with it. The, the, the aerial for the Ducato is actually in the driver's side mirror. So it's inside that mirror housing there. So it's not in the windscreen, it's in the mirror. And that's on the on the Ducato. So sometimes things are blocking it. You could have maybe have mirror covers on or something like that that might affect it. I don't know. We don't have them on ours. But I'd say this works probably 90% of the time for us as DAB. It's really good. The car would probably work about 95%. It's slightly better, but this works about 90% 90, 90%. We've used it all over the country and it's been really good for us. Just to confirm, Molly is being really patient. She's waiting still nicely while I carry on filming. You can see the mud I've traipsed into the van down there. Yes, it won't be long, Mole. Nearly finished. Okay, so probably one of the most important features that people want to have on their van, on their van, is the navigation. Now, this has got it built in. This actually, this nav unit, as I said before, is, is really actually quite good um, for nav. It's not quite as fast as a car nav, the one that's built into your car, but for what it does, it's actually really, really good. So I'm going to show you how that works. One thing you have to bear in mind is you must, must, must update the software. I know I've said this before, but you must update the software both for the head unit and also for your maps. But the most important thing to make it work faster is for the head unit. And there's an easy way to see the, the, the system you've got on. So again, you can just swipe along using your finger or you can use the dial at the top. So go into settings and then it brings up the, the, the system you've got. So you can see there, mine is XF220 version 4.3. So you can check that on the Exempt website to make sure you've got the latest version. If you haven't, please update your software. The system doesn't work anywhere near as well if it's not updated. When we first got ours, it hadn't been updated and it was really slow and I could see whatever it meant, it's really frustrating. Um, but once you've done that, basically, the software update makes a massive difference. It makes the system much more responsive. You can see I'm doing this in real time and our system's really, really quick. It's as quick as the car system we've got in our cars. So, navigation, let's see how this works. Tap navigation. It will now start to search and find where you are in the world. Now, because I'm parked up and I've just driven here, it's automatically picked up my signal. Again, once you've updated the software, it's a lot quicker to do this. So you can see a number of different functions on here. It shows the direction you're facing. So east, it gives you the speed limit for the road you're on, which is 60 here, which is accurate. It gives a menu and then it gives you the traffic at the top as well. Oops, I accidentally pressed the menu button. Sorry about that. Uh, let me go back. Um, it's the menu button, and at the top, you up here, you've got the time. 
and you've also got the traffic if it's picked up any traffic jams so that automatically changes and updates when it picks up traffic for you automatically so how do you put in locations and use a postcode search very straightforward tap the three bars you've got new route multi-point route traffic camping it's quite useful for finding campsites you've then got useful information settings and about click on about and then version information it'll give you your license and it'll show you the last time your maps were updated and you can see them on there now you can see the data so you can see when it was updated um, last so if I go down you can also see licenses the map licenses on it so you can see on there that's the that's the important one so latest map guarantee mine was actually updated with its most recent free one so this is the bit you're looking for sorry so ignore version information go to licenses and you'll see latest map guarantee for me was the quarter two 2020 and that's what's on their website free of charge if i want any more maps after that initial update that i did on the, on the van i have to pay for it it's an optional extra and that's probably the main difference between your car nav and, and this nav it's cost you more money to update them anyway go back so if you want to put in a location tap the three bars and it brings up new route you can see how fast this is a lot of people complain about how slow it is because the software is updated to the latest version it's really really quick so hit new route you can see where we've been <laughs> wasdale head uh, york so you can also then have save locations history places address i'm not going to click on save locations because it'll show our home address um, but places you can save stuff in here it's really useful history shows you where you've been and then address so the thing is to put the postcode in you have to tap address okay so two presses and it'll bring them up and then you've got an option country town or postcode and then street so i'm going to search for chester so just type in chester it starts to bring them up as you can see at the top and you can see it's really quick this is me doing it in real time chester united kingdom i'm going to hit that button there and it says the street you want to go into so i'm going to go to bridge street in chester so i'll type in bridge and you'll see it starts to think about it for you there you go bridge street it's brought it up already bridge street i'm going to hit that number there and i'm just going to go to street i'm not going to put a number in you can do go to street and it starts to work out the destination it shows you on a map so you can check it first hit select as destination and then it'll automatically start calculating your route and you can see how quick it is key information it shows you how far away you are um, it shows you the distance in miles and the time you're due to get there and it starts showing you your turns and that pops up on the screen there as well if you press the three bars again you can actually have a look at your, your route so route summary and it will show you your route so you can see where we are in Delamere Forest which is just up here where the arrow is and that's the route following it all the way along takes you into Chester to Bridge Street once you're happy with your route you just basically press the button and go you've got the option to change to alternatives and look at route info as well on there too there's lots of information you can do on this system and play with it but that's now automatically going to take me to my route really really good to clear a route very simple press the three bars and you've got different options delete route route summary detours and alternatives delete route and that'll say yes i want to delete the route done takes me back to the home screen of the nav so one of the other features i wanted to show you on this is something we used when we we're on our summer holiday and it was brilliant for this if you've set a route and you want to drive somewhere so say for example we wanted to go from here to uh, york and then harrogate and then perhaps on to scarborough but we wanted to drive there just drive into the center we didn't want to put a specific address in you can do that from this system so to do that it's really simple so if you press the three three arrows and then go to multi-point route and this is where it's really quite clever current gps position you can add a new destination so we'll add a new destination so i'm going to type in york search and it'll bring up a number of different things so you can see there the yorkshire roast company it's trying to find things that we're close to okay like destinations and that's what a lot of people do that's if they think oh no it's not working i don't know how to search it's really really frustrating and straightforward so if i go back instead of going straight into that search bar at the top you go into address or places save location or history so if you go to places it brings up a list of different things so petrol stations etc things you can find categories but if you go back into address again and this time we want to put in york into the town or postcode if i put it into here done go to town don't put anything else in literally go to town select as destination so it's put in york 
so we can see that's York in the center. And the good thing with it is, is you don't have to drive directly to that location. As long as you drive close to the vicinity, it automatically picks up that you've been close to it, and then it goes into your next route. So I want to add another another destination, add um, another insert waypoint. So I want to go to, this time I'm going to add Harrogate. So remember, don't type in the key bar at the top, hit address, middle button there, town or country, and I'm going to type in Harrogate. It's come up because it knows it's close. There we go. Harrogate. Go to town. Select as destination. And you can see how quick this is. And then the final one, I'm going to put in final destination. This time I'm going to change it to Scarborough. So again, remember, just go to address. Middle one. Scarborough. There we go. It knows it's that destination. It's close. Go to town. Select as destination. And that's it. So now we've got in there, we've got in York, Harrogate and Scarborough. Calculate route. So it's now going to sit and work out the route for me, the best way to get there. You'll see it just takes a second to do that. There we go. And you can see the, the waypoints on the map. So it's showing here our route from Delamere Forest across up to York, up to Harrogate. I put them in the wrong way around and then back across. So now we can see our route, the time it takes us to get there, the distance, the total distance and everything else. So the first destination it's gonna take us to there is York. And that's how you use a multi-point route. It's really, really good for planning distances and journeys. It's definitely set up for, uh, you know, for motorhoming. Again, to cancel it, just go back to there, delete waypoint, route summary, details alternative. Or you can add a new waypoint as well, if you wanted to as well. I'm gonna delete waypoint, delete route or waypoint, you can do both, I'm gonna do delete route. That's it done. Really simple, really straightforward. Okay, so next I'm going to show you how to pair your phone. Really straightforward. There's two ways to do it. If you've got an Android phone, you can actually pair it with a cable um, and it will mirror your screen onto it. But the resolution is really poor. It's something I tried. It wasn't particularly good. I think the later versions are going to come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. But that's something I tried when I first got it, but I haven't used it. It lets you mirror your screen, basically, if you've got an Android phone to the display on here. Um, but because of the shape of my phone, it puts it either straight or doesn't fill the screen fully, and the resolution is quite poor. So the straightforward, most straightforward way to do it is connect it via Bluetooth. Connect it via Bluetooth, you can obviously use it for calls, etc. But you can also use it to play uh, music through Spotify. And there's other, another shortcut I'll show you in a second as well. Hit Bluetooth, and it gives you the option to pay your phone. So on your phone, once you've got to that screen, all you need to do is go into, I'm going to show you my phone now. This is my new phone, so it's got not been set up before. Hit Bluetooth, and then pair new device. So you can see it's searching. Searching, there we go, Exent. So if I hit that, it now should bring up the passcode, and you can see on the screen up there, 0000. zero, zero, zero. So if I type that in, sorry, I'm trying to do this with, um, with no hands. Zero, zero, zero done uh, that matches and then we'll see what it does on the screen just a quick point to add a really good shortcut if you're struggling with dab and you can't get it to work or you haven't got a very good signal where you are if you've got your phone connected via bluetooth and you download the TuneIn app i'll put it on the screen so you can see it you can play your radio through your phone signal so you can download the TuneIn app play dab radio for wherever you are and it allow you to play it through the, the radio on the on the on the van so if you do have issues with a dab download TuneIn as an app and then you can run it straight through that using the Bluetooth connection, which is down here. That's the one at the bottom there. It starts playing music for you. Um, mine's obviously not set up to do that yet, but that's how it works. Just something to bear in mind, the, the, I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but it's currently saying leisure battery 12.5 volts. I've turned the unit off, as you can see. If I turn it on, just bear in mind that it uses the power from the leisure battery so it doesn't use your vehicle battery and it doesn't go off when you turn the key in the ignition so you do have to remember to switch it off it's really useful you'll see the battery is now dropped to 12.4 i don't know if you can see that on the screen if i can bring that up 12.4 it might be too bright it might be easy to wait for it to go off but you can see basically it's using power from the leisure battery so it means it's really nice if you want to sit in the front in the dinette you can put the radio on you can put a cd on if you've got one you can plug in a usb stick um, and you can listen to music from the front of the cab um, which is really useful but it does use a leisure battery and it doesn't switch itself off automatically you have to turn it off with this button here as i say you might be able to see that better uh, from here now so it's 12.5 volts you can see with the radio off if i turn it on let's turn it on just press it once, it powers up, 
There you go. It comes on relatively quickly as well. The easy thing to do is remember when you first get into the van, you're sort of starting up and sorting everything out. I just turn it on. By the time I've turned it on, it's then ready and it's picked up the signal for the uh, the nav unit as well, so it's ready to go. So you don't have to mess around. You see, it's remember the previous screen I was on. Hit nav. It'll start loading the nav. You see in the background there. Sorry about the reflection. And you can see it's trying to find for a GPS signal. So let's see how quickly it finds this signal. Um, it's brought up the last music we listened to at the bottom, so you can see it. Um, now it's trying to find a GPS signal. So it'll be interesting to see how long this takes. It figures out where we are. As I say, normally I leave this on when I first get into the van and then just come back to it. So just to show you the power unit now on the top, you can see the leisure battery has dropped to 12.4. So you can see it's draining from the leisure battery, not the vehicle battery. So it's just dropped it down. You can see, come back to the screen, it's actually picked it up already. So you can see it's automatically found where we were, where we are, location, which is really good. So that's, that, that took a few seconds. I mean, it's showing one minute 30 on the camera now, um, but I started recording that. It probably took about 30 seconds to find where we were. So as I say, once your software is updated, it is so much quicker. Just one other point I made earlier about this, uh, this cable in here, this USB cable. This is where you plug in to do the update for the software. So you put your USB stick, once you've downloaded the software onto your PC, transferred it to a USB stick, you plug it into here, um, which is in the top box on the Decato, before you do your update for the unit itself. Are you trying to tell me something? You wanna go now, do you? You've waited really patiently, haven't you? You're a really good girl. Should we go in the forest? Shall we? Come on then. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go into the forest. Yay. Do you like the radio control car? Is it nice? You haven't chased in the forest, have you? Do you want your stick? Come on then, let's play. Should we turn the camera off? See you later. See you later. Bye. Bye. the paw thanks very good did you have fun in the forest it's time to go home you go home for your tea come on then okay so we are back back from Delamere Forest hopefully you found that part of the video useful if you've watched it and obviously the extra clips of Molly in the forest and the radio control car that I took with me
<laughs> not that I'm five or anything. Um, but yeah, it's, it, this this we did this video because we get asked so many times about the the head unit and how to make it work or how the dab works. People get really frustrated with it. A lot of people take it straight out and change it. Um, but honestly, if you bear with it and give it a bit of bit of bit of uh, TLC, so if you do the software updates and then you just learn to use it, it's as quick as a car now. But it's really good. Um, we've been really pleased, haven't we? Yes, we have. When we went to Scotland on the big road trip in in last year and summer, yeah. it was really good, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah, it's all we used. We didn't use anything else to navigate up there. We're in some really remote places, and it found everywhere we wanted to go to, didn't it? Yeah, it's got the the uh, a lot of um, caravan sites. It does, yeah. And um, camping sites in it as well, doesn't yeah. it? And um, stopping places. Yeah, there's lots of useful information there as well to play with. I didn't show that particularly in the video, as, as Caroline said. It's a really useful feature on it as well. So feel free to just, just you know, play with it and you can't really go wrong. It's um, Once you've got it, the software updated, it's so much quicker and responsive. And say our, our unit's obviously obsolete now, but it works really fast, as you can see from the video. That was all filmed in real time. <clears throat> so next week's video will be a travel video. Yay! So. Uh, I can't wait to show you that one. And I uh, just want to say thanks to our new subscribers. If you're still watching this part of the video, well done. Um, we've yeah, got... well done. <laughs> <laughs> this has been quite a technical video, so apologies for that. It's not normally like this, but it's something we wanted to share. We, we asked so many times. But thank you to all our new subscribers. We've had loads of people subscribe recently, and the feedback's been brilliant. We love getting messages and comments. So... They're all so nice. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. If you're watching and you haven't subscribed, please feel free to subscribe. It really helps our channel. helps us get more things to review and share with you and some, some best practice tips and stuff. I really hope you've enjoyed my involvement in this video. Um, I know my input has been huge this week, as usual, with these technical videos. <laughs> <laughs> I think Molly's had a bigger part than you this week. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, thanks ever so much for watching, and we'll see you in next week's video. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.